This is going to be a little bit scary if you are the competition. I mean, if you are Volkswagen, if you are Toyota, that are relying on sales right now in order to service your enormous astronomical debt, even if you love those companies, you cannot deny. The reality is they are the first and second most indebted companies in the world, not automotive companies, companies. So if you see your competition coming along and saying, you know what, our second generation platform is way more cost effective to produce. It's much better than yours, but we've already got a third generation. It's about to be, it's about to come out within a matter of months and you haven't even begun as an automaker. You haven't even begun to really get started on your second generation, which is you're hoping to catch Tesla's first generation. What do you do? How do you compete with their third generation? I mean, that all sounds confusing, but the truth is what that means is they're screwed. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans. I'm coming to you from Melbourne in Australia. And thank you for supporting the channel in 2022 on Patreon as a YouTube member. Couldn't do it without you guys. Really big thanks to you. And also to thank you to all of you who have responded to my email, my basically my request for you to provide any assistance or help you have in terms of advice for what I can do. And I'm, many of you have responded, and I'm sorry I haven't replied to all of you yet, but I will within the next couple of days. Thank you so much for putting in the effort, the time to help me. I really appreciate that. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'll put a link in some in the description below to my video about the um, the recent challenges that uh, of some of my family have had. Tesla have just announced they will be releasing what I like to call their third generation platform. It's going to be much more, much more cost effective, way cheaper to produce than their existing platform. And realistically, this is not such a big issue for companies like BYD, right? Well, not companies like, there's only one BYD in the world. They're vertically integrated. Tesla are vertically integrated. BYD can make things cost effectively because they mass manufacture now. They're a major mass producer of EVs. No one else is mass producing EVs at scale like Tesla and BYD. So the thing is, those two companies are, they're basically innovating at an insane pace. But the thing is, think about this, right? Toyota and Volkswagen and almost everyone else have an EV platform that is not cost effective with Tesla's right now. I mean, Tesla makes industry leading profit. You can't argue with that. That's a fact. But if you're, if you're looking at that and you're going, you know what, we're benchmarking our product now against Tesla's existing Model 3, Model Y platform. And then Tesla say, well, that's great, but our new one's going to be way cheaper than that. Then wouldn't you be a little bit concerned that whatever you're making right now, whatever your future platform is going to be, is just not going to be good enough, not going to be cheap enough, not going to be able to compete with your direct competition, with the company or with the two companies that are disrupting your business in a way that there's nothing you can do. Tesla's new car platform will be more cost effective and require half the effort to produce it. I don't know what that means exactly, but half the effort, think about this, right? Volkswagen have said, they said themselves, the, the former CEO said it takes Tesla to produce an EV, it takes them 10 hours. It takes Volkswagen 30 hours. Volkswagen, are way, they're way further ahead in terms of their EV progression than Toyota. So it's even worse for Toyota, right? 30 hours versus 10 hours. And then and then Tesla come along and say, oh, that's great, but our next platform is going to take half the time to produce the platform, not the entire car, the platform. What does that mean? Well, that means that this is bringing the cost down to a level that will enable Tesla to produce a $25,000 EV at scale, right? to not make it at a loss, to not sell it at a loss, to make it at scale. That is what they need. That is how they get to 20 million cars a year. I don't think they're going to do that. But 10 million cars a year, that's more realistic. 10 million cars a year, this is how you do it. This is the most important product in the company's history. That's not an overstatement. That is an understatement. It is the most important. I think it's going to change the way we look at the company. The Generation 3 platform will be presented at Investor Day in March 2023. In other words, we're looking at really less than three months before the competition get a little sneak peek at what's about to smack them in the face. And this is going to be a big smack in the face. I mean, think about this, right? You're trying as hard as you can 
to produce EVs at scale, let alone, you know, let alone compete with some new generation platform that's going to basically pull your pants down and expose your bare butt in front of the world. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. And really, this is a huge problem for German automakers, for Japanese automakers. They're so far behind now that frankly, I don't see how they'll ever catch up. Now they may, they may, but if they're going to, I don't know how, I just don't see the path. Let me know though in the comments, do you agree with that? Do you disagree? Or why? Let me know. Obviously this platform will be new, much cheaper than the old version, lighter, structurally more efficient, right? That's the big difference. Now on Monday, Tesla announced that it will hold an investor day on the 1st of March, meaning in two months from now, where it will share updates about what it is doing and how it is going to lay the smack down to its gasoline powered competitors. Among other things, the company is going to discuss the generation three platform with its investors, which is going to be, um, it's going to be fascinating and concerning if you're the competition. Tesmanian says that during the Q3 2022 earnings call, Tesla was asked about potential next generation vehicle developments. Particular emphasis was placed on reducing the cost of the new platform. So when moving from the Model S and X platform to the Model 3 and Y platform, the, the cost of production fell enormously. I mean, really, Tesla didn't start making a profit, right? Until they started selling cheaper cars. Doesn't make sense, does it? How do you make a profit selling cheaper cars? This is what it comes down to. Efficiency of their manufacturing. Tesla's manufacturing efficiency when it comes to building an EV, according to Sandy Munro, who actually is the guy really taking these things apart, comparing them, right? It's it's better than everyone else. It's that simple. No one else is doing the giga castings at the same scale, included with structural battery packs and using lithium ion phosphate batteries. That, my friends, is what I'm talking about. Next generation manufacturing efficiency and at scale. They are making a lot of EVs. No one is doing anywhere near as many, not even BYD. Because BYD make plug-in hybrids, which are a bit more than 50% of their sales right now. Now, let's take the company to a whole new level, making a three and Y. Where does this take them? We're going from this level here, right? Well, down here at Model S, Model X platform, we came to here with the Model Y, Model 3. Then they improved the Model 3 and the Model Y platform, making structural batteries. Then, they, you know, they included things like gear castings. This new platform, where's it going to be? Nobody really knows. Nobody knows. But I can tell you now, I'll be holding my Tesla stock. I don't care what Bloomberg, what Forbes, what all these clowns say. I'll be holding my stock because I believe, I believe it's true. I believe it's true that it's only a matter of time before Tesla is the most valuable automaker on the planet and not because of hype, not because of future projected price to earnings ratios, because of actual monetary gain, because they're disrupting the biggest industry in the world. In October, Tesla executives said that the transition to a new platform will take place when it becomes possible to reduce the overall cost of production, not only financially, but also the effort involved. The company expects that in the, the time it will take to produce one Model 3, it can produce two vehicles on the new platform. This in turn will mean that production will use half the factory floor space of what is currently in use. Elon Musk has been talking about this for years. And now they're really doing this in a big way. The new platform will be smaller than the Model 3 and the Y, and the, and the new generation vehicle will be produced in quantities that will surpass the production of the entire current lineup of Tesla vehicles combined. So they're saying this new platform, this new affordable EV, right? They're going to make more of these than what they are combined. Cybertruck, Semi, 3, Y, S, X, Roadster, if it ever comes to market. I mean, not that I care. To be honest, it's irrelevant. But the point is, that's a lot of cars. That's crazy number of cars. That's where Tesla are planning to be. That's where they're planning to go. They're basically saying to you, this is our plan. Now, I'm going to ask you the question. What's Toyota's plan? Do you know what it is? I don't think anyone does because they don't know. You need a plan to actually achieve something. If you think Toyota are going to disrupt the industry, there's still people saying this. They're all over the shop. They're, all, they're on this channel sometimes. Why are you here? I don't know. But there's people here still saying, Toyota, the behemoth, they're coming back. I can tell you now. Look, they had 21 concept vehicles. They made a few concept cars. I told you they're doing it. No, you need a plan to succeed. They don't even have a plan. They've already admitted that. They've admitted they're changing their ideas, their plans. 
They're going to disclose their plans in January. No one knows what they are because they don't even know what they are. They don't. Musk said, we're going to take everything we learned from Sexy, SX3 and Y, Cybertruck and Semi, and put that into the platform. But as we said to you many times, we're on a two for one target. So we're trying to get that 50% number again. We're going to take two to make what I think will be the most efficiently produced vehicle in the history of the automotive industry. I mean, really, we're already pretty much there with the structural castings, with the structural battery packs, with with the many evolutions in the Model Y. Look at the Model Y. Just watch Sandy Monroe's video. Three different models. You think they saw the same car. Three different years, three different models, and actually big changes to each model. Tesla doesn't even talk about it. During the grand opening of Giga Texas in April 2022, Musk said that Tesla will develop a dedicated robo-taxi that will have a futuristic look. Massive scale, full self-driving, there's going to be a dedicated robo-taxi, he said. The fact that he began to talk more specifically about the upcoming development hints that it's going to be unveiled soon. In addition, Tesla chief designer Franz von Holfshausen also hinted at a new model of the car in an interview with CNBS, although he gave no details. He said it was his grand defining work or something like that. Apart from this, this mysterious development also appeared at the Tesla Semi delivery event in early December. However, it was covered giving no hint of what it actually looks like. Personally, I don't really care about the robot taxis. I see more value actually in the short term, even though it sounds crazy, in the energy side of the business. The energy side of the business is going to be where Tesla will potentially make more money than they will selling cars. Selling energy is, in my opinion, where it's at for the next 10 years. Beyond that point, the cost of energy will be marginal. There won't be a whole lot of money to make. There'll be some money to make in terms of superchargers where Tesla will be using, taking energy out of the grid when it's cheap and it's going to be insanely cheap at certain times of the night as we have more renewable energy there'll be an excess of energy that cheap that energy will be super cheap at certain times of the night they they put that into their enormous mega batteries that are going they're all being built out underneath their supercharger stations then they sell it to you at two o'clock in the daytime when there's huge demand you're at the supercharger you're a captive audience they sell it to you at about 20 times the cost that's what i call margin that's the margin they need but how do you get there, right? How do you get to that point? Well, you make the batteries yourself. Well, they don't make the cells, but you make the, the actual battery packs yourself. You have the cheapest cost energy chargers. They do. We already know that. They're much cheaper than the competition for Tesla to install one charger. Now, many gas stations right around the world are now starting to install electric chargers. But have you seen the cost that costs them? Have you seen how much the different their costs are to Tesla's? Well, that's the analogy I give you here. Many companies are making EVs, starting to make EVs. But I ask you this, what are their costs? Have they disclosed them? Have they talked about how they're reducing the cost by 50% and how they're going to do it? Rhetorical question. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.